Greetings and welcome back to room 303 in our chats with Emily as we are calling our readings through the poems of Emily Dickinson contained in the Johnson edition. We are turning now to poem 96. Sexton, my master's sleeping here. It is an interesting poem on a number of counts. It's given rise to all kinds of speculation. Um, it is another death poem. You'll have to remember as well, as we've said in earlier information about Emily, that right out her back door she saw the Amherst the Cemetery. So she grew up looking at a cemetery, and to that degree she's very comfortable. Of course here she's going to speak directly to the gravedigger, Sexton. Of course, readers of Emily's time and right after, because they knew Shakespeare's Hamlet so well, and especially Act Five. We've given full lectures at LearnStrong.net, but um, you know, that, that we got all kinds of gravedigger stuff going on here as well. Now, uh, to speak of, of, uh, of our assumptions in LearnStrong.net, I'm hopeful that you've been following our stuff at LearnStrong.net, down that left-hand side, uh, chats with Emily, again, our playlist. I'm hopeful that you've already worked through our introductory set of comments as well as the preceding 95 poems, because these poems, I, I said in my previous lecture on uh, poem 95, uh, my nose gaze over captives, that these poems become symphonic, uh, and, and in some ways they, they build on each other in our reading and in our study. Now, in this poem, we're going to hear about the master, and this will be the first time that we've heard about this in the poems, and there's a whole lot of debate, because Emily will reference uh, the master several times in letters and elsewhere. She even mentions it here in her poem, and it isn't clear who she's talking about. Scholars have varied. Some have considered Benjamin Newton. Some have talked about Leonard Humphrey, who at, at, death, uh, at his death, Emily said, my master has gone to rest. It could be George Otis Phillips Lord. It could be Samuel Boyles. It could be any number of other options. And uh, it's one of the things that makes Emily's study so much fun because we're, uh, most of this stuff we're never really going to get to the bottom, you know, the bottom of it all. And, that, and that's fun. Let's enjoy the poem. Sexton, my master's sleeping here. Pray, lead me to his bed. I came to build the bird's nest and sow the early seed that when the snow creeps slowly from off his chamber door, daisies point the way there and the troubadour. Uh, now, we think of the troubadour, uh, the troubadour bird is probably what she's referencing here. We'll, we'll have more to say about it in a second. We will find Sexton mentioned in poems 324, 640, and I'll let you run those to the ground. We'll obviously mention again this poem when we get there. And then Master. Now, Master will be mentioned in poems 151, 337, 415, 462, and 754. And when I get to 3A here in a little bit, I'll comment a little bit on the uh, biographers that have, I think, most eloquently talked about the possibility of who these, this master for her is. It's clear in Emily's life that she was seeking an audience, sometimes an audience of one, sometimes uh, more. And, and as we commented in the last poem, my nose gaze are for captives. She, I think, ultimately had some sense that you and I would be reading her poetry and having converse with her, which is why we call our series Chats with Emily. Notice here, my master sleeping here. Notice the language of death as sleep. And of course, Emily's audience immediately would recognize that when Christ in Luke 8, 52 talked about the young girl who was not actually dead but sleeping, and of course they make fun of, of Christ, and then he in the story will resurrect the young girl from the dead. My master sleeping here, pray, lead me to his bed. It's almost as if she's speaking to the grave tigger to say, can you remember where you buried my master? Because I want to go there. And then I came to build the bird's nest. Um, now, this will take us back to poem 84. Building a nest is a sign of obviously showing eternal loyalty and love for someone. And she says, I want to sow the early seeds. So notice she's got references to birds as well as um, to early seeds. And, uh, and, and that there's a reason for that. That when the snow creeps, it's an interesting word, by the way, slowly, from off his chamber door, we can't help but read that phrase, chamber door, and think about our study of Pope's raven. In, at LearnStrong.net. Daisies point the way there and the troubadour. Uh, we're going to hear more about troubadours in poems, uh, uh, well, we've already heard in poem 23 and then in poem 99 as well. The idea that I want there to continue to be celebration for whoever she is referencing as her master. At 2A, I think the point of this little poem is that it is important to remember those we care for and love and those we have gratitude towards long after they're gone. Uh, to be, I love the ambiguity of who the master is. 
at 3A, there's been a number of biographers that have gestured at this. Um, uh, Richard uh, Sewell will be one that we've drawn heavily on for this series of lectures, as well as Alfred um, Haberger's uh, My Wars Are Laid Away in Books is the title of that biography, and then Lyndon Gordon's classic. I say classic even though, uh, you know, already it's, it's received such respect, um, uh, life, uh, like um, Loaded Guns. I think all of these are, are necessary reads, but in the end, I'm telling you, we're going to get left still with speculating about who it is that is the master that she's speaking of. Finally, as 3B, to try and own a poem like this, do you have someone in your life that you would consider a master or a teacher of importance for you? Some, and, and as well, is there someone whose grave that you visit to quote unquote build the nest, if you will? It's an interesting way to read this poem. Thank you.